We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Bad idea. And welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is show 133, and I'm sorry we've crossed the dateline. We are now in November 19th, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through ba- uh, b- 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 through mostly rational conversations. They make you go, oh, really? Got a little tongue-tied there, but I'm still your host, Andy Cowan, and i got my usual suspects still. i got uh, Fred Sims, and I've got Stephen Griffith and Daniel Atherton. Welcome back, guys. Okay, so, <clears throat> bad ideas. Let's, let's wrap this sucker up here so that we can go to bed. Because obviously it's getting late. Uh, something that crossed my news feed was some sad and yet completely anticipated news. The private mm. prison company formerly known as CCA, or Cor- Corrections Corporation of America, recently rebranded to Core Civic. Uh, it announced Tuesday that the Federal Bureau of Prisons will extend its two-year contract with the company, despite the recent findings of inadequate supervision uh-huh. and gaps in oversight of private prisons. Huh. It's amazing what you can do with a rebrand. Yeah. We're just going to reorganize. We'll, we'll, no, we'll look after ourselves. We promise totally gonna happen guys it'll be great we're gonna make prisons great again yeah i was gonna say that's your rebranding right there it's, <laughs> it's not that they changed names it's that our country rebranded and mm-hmm. what is a guy who's looking for profit going to look for prison system that looks even more for profit and so private well, especially since won't... he's planning on deporting two million people and, of course, there was that whole, we're not going to rule out internment camps. I'm not saying that we're going to do internment camps, but I'm not going to rule them out either. Because After all, there is a precedent for Because them. there's precedent for oh. them. He's going to need them for the, I believe, I want to say 18 countries that don't currently accept deportees back from the United States that he's going to yeah. have to imply sanctions on in terms of visas in order to make them take them back. He's going to have to keep them somewhere. About that. I don't see that as being a money making proposition. That's not a great idea. Well, it isn't. No, no. Because no. a lot of those people are paying taxes. Yeah, and if you just plop them in a. Th- then you're taking care of them. You're putting them in prison. That's what They're an no internment camp is. Taxes. Yeah. You're stripping them out of the economy. Ken, you're, you're proposing these massive tax cuts. Oh, I Where's the money going to come from? I'm, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> all the economists that were looking at his tax plan saying it's going to put us like ten trillion dollars in debt, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, okay, yeah, we'll just we'll see how that goes, right, guys, right? Oh God, <laughs> yeah, he's he's used to working with those numbers, well, not those numbers, but with negative numbers because he has the fallback of bankruptcy and he's very adept at working yeah. the bankruptcy course. I mean. If we want to talk about him having knowledge of any one thing, that's what it is. As sad as it may be. you can't do that as a country. But he doesn't well, know no, that. Let's be I, right. Yeah, I don't You think actually he knows that. can, it's but it utterly destroys your economy. Yeah. Overnight. And, <laughs> and the country's dependent on you and your economy. Look at Greece. Look at what Greece was doing to the EU going down that road of bankruptcy and the bailouts that they needed in order to keep everyone around them afloat. Yeah. I'm really hoping that Obama has, you know, just gives him absolutely masterclass levels of, of training. Otherwise we're all going to suffer for it. He's playing, he's playing around them. It doesn't matter. Well, no, if, yeah. depending on the training, he'll completely backpedal on all these things, and he won't do them. But when you keep appointing people who want you to do them. Well, yeah, but you know, he can change his mind. And he changes his mind a lot. Well, see, and right now, he's not even appointing these people. Mike Pence. Exactly. So Mike people. Pence is handpicking the people he wants in his cabinet when he knows that the Republicans are going to impeach 
Trump for whatever slight they can find and hand over the reins to him. To steal from Mr. O'Connor's house of tinfoil hats. <laughs> Mr. O'Connor's house of tinfoil hats. This that, needs to be a location in an RPG somewhere. I am writing that shit down <laughs> right now. It's in the Commonwealth okay. somewhere. Yep. Yeah, to to steal a hat or two <laughs> from inside that warehouse of hats, it's this is exactly falling in line for a Pence presidency because, hey, we're not beating this monster. Let's see what we can do to destroy it from the inside. We still get to maintain control. And we don't have to deal with him anymore because they well, don't want to deal with him either. Quick sidebar on Pence. He went and saw Hamilton last night. He got booed. The best thing that came out of that was somebody who was in attendance and goes, hey, look, Mike Pence saw blacks and Latinos for the first time. We have confirmation. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn. <gasps> I needed that. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So on to uh, the UK. On path to pass a massive surveillance bill. The the Snoopers Bill 2 uh, attack on your civil liberties uh, has passed through the House of Lords. Um, this would be and a is on the- Theresa May uh, brainchild, I'm sure. Oh, yes. This, again. Oh, yeah, and look at how creepy she is in the picture on this story. <laughs> I, I, I'm I, watching I, you. I, wa- I don't want to demonize her for appear- her appearance. I want to demonize her for where it counts, her policies. Um, no, it's just the look in her eye. That's that's what it is. Yeah, it's not her appearance. It's just the way the picture, yeah, you know, yeah. presents well, her. It's the independent. They don't like paying her in a good light. Um, yeah. No. <coughs> the investigatory powers bill, um, huge, huge spying powers, and and one of her pet projects before she even became prime minister, um, has has passed through the House of Lords. Um, it will quickly get voted upon in the House of Commons and may very well become the law of the land in the UK. It does wait a royal assent as well, so the Queen could say no as well. But you know, I, I keep unlikely. saying I keep saying that in the hopes that she will listen to this little podcast. Say, say no, say no, Liz, say no. But, um, no, this would force um, companies to hold on to a year's worth of data on any one customer. Uh, it would also force them to, you know, be able to jailbreak any phone. Well, be able to hack into any device. Yeah, jailbreaking is, is the term for, well, a, for a citizen breaking their own device. This would be the government. The corporation. Having, yeah. Yeah, this would be what Being our government to wants to install. To break open the device. Yeah, but you know, Apple won't play ball with that. They won't. No, and and besides Apple, you have all of the country or all of the companies that came to their defense in that regard. Um, I t- wait. I take that back. We don't know exactly what Apple did when they started selling in China. We don't know what they did because no. China is way worse than this as far as spying on their own citizens. I mean, hey, they just passed a law where you can no longer call Kim Jong-un fat. Right. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, I saw that. No fatty, China just no, that. No, no fatty jokes. No fatty jokes. And apparently it wasn't, it wasn't Kim Jong-un that, that asked for that. It was apparently his security people. Because they yeah. wanted to keep keep him happy. Yeah, it's a fun world, folks. It's such a fun world. You don't even have to look at Trump to find all the fun. You can you can look everywhere, and there's all sorts of craziness. craziness. Now, if you want to have fun, go and find a video of the Irish uh, MP just completely losing it on as the world descends into fascism. Yeah, that was good. 
that was really good. Um, go enjoy yeah, go. that video. Find it. It's a good one. Yeah, it, it it should be making the rounds. Like it it went fairly viral, so it, it's it's out there. Anyway, the the main objections to this bill center around the vast new powers that the government is given to spy on its own citizens. It includes powers to force companies to make their phone less secure so that they can be listened in on by spies and others that would allow the government to ask companies like Apple and Google to help break them and hack into phones. Perhaps the most controversial measure will require Internet service providers to keep information on their customers' web browsing for one year, which, of course, you already said. I'm just reiterating after our little tangent there. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. And again, the Tories are in control, so this will probably pass. I wasn't expecting it to get through the House of Lords. I really wasn't. But it passed. So it's up to the House of Commons to stop it, and I don't think they will. Solicitor General Robert Buckland insisted it would simply simply not appropriate to include within the investigatory powers bill changes designed to ensure costs are awarded against newspaper and media organizations in phone hacking cases. Huh. Interesting. I'd be curious to know what the detailed information they have to keep on the web browsing, you know, will end up being because, you know, they talk about it leading to fears that it can be stolen or leaked and, yeah, it's gonna get stolen. It would probably just be metadata for where you visit. Um, but the thing is, there are ways around this. Um, you can install a, a VPN, virtual private network, on your phone. And that way, all the internet traffic that goes out of the phone is encrypted. Out of the country. So, they can look at it, and it's just going to be a blob. It's going to be a blob of traffic to a VPN server somewhere else. And on that exit node, that's where all your traffic goes. So all they're going to do is force the bad guys that they're looking for to do that. This does not protect the government from the bad guys. The bad guys it are just going to get burner phones and it's just going to be a quick thing and it's going to be gone. Or they're going to encrypt their data. And that math just works. There are providers in the United States that somebody in the UK could use that will just encrypt their data to someplace like Chicago. And if all you're doing is just obscuring what websites you're looking at, it's not a big deal. Or you could go out to the Netherlands. You could go out to, you know, any any number of countries. I like Pro XPN myself. Not that they're provi- you know, <laughs> providing me anything. There, there's my pick. Pro XPN, VPN service. They don't, they don't store metadata. They don't store records. They don't care. They're all about privacy. So, there you go. Um, and fairly reasonable as far as pricing. And you can have it on your phone and you can have it on your computer and you're done. So, it, it's not like there's not a way to do this. The math is there. It's ah. This only this is only going to cost the governments that do it an awful lot of money to store useless crap. And then you have to have somebody look at it occasionally. And then you have the problem of a wealth of data. Having so much data that you can't do anything with it because it's impossible to parse. Then you have to have supercomputers, and then they're going to have false positives out the wazoo, and you're not going to be able to process it fast enough to actually make any any real measurable difference. It's, it's just terrible. It, it doesn't work. In the entire history that, that the, the NSA in this country was going after it, Less than 10 were ever found. And I think only one was ever actually useful. So, good, good luck, guys. Good luck. Have a, have a great day. Okay, so that, uh, that was that one. Um, 
feel free and, and take a look. You know, we've got, got the links here at our show notes at areallyradio.com for show 133. And, uh, oh, this was, this was a dark news. This was a dark, dark report here. I mean, we were just talking about their president last week. Was it last week? No, yeah. the week, yeah, he the was week say, before. Was... He was mentioned, and the week before, and he's constantly in the cycle. My favorite underscored, most people don't pay attention to him, dictator. This guy, this guy right here, look at that mug. He was elected. Just, you know, he was democratically elected, fully democratically elected. But if you ever want to see somebody actually prosecute an actual drug war, look at him. Also, all the other things he's going, but... Our wonderful man, Philippines President Rodrigo Duarte, has decided, or not decided yet, they're considering following Russia's lead and removing themselves from the International Criminal Court. Because, as he says, it's useless, and the more than likely he will also state that it is a puppet of more Western governments. I hate to say that. It's but the it's, United States puppet, so they can f- uh, later on, if they choose to, try and prosecute me for saving my nation. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that sounds like a reasonable thing that he would say. Uh, Duarte said that if Russia and China were to create a new order, then the Philippines would be the first to join it. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, we're dealing with the Axis and the Allies again. Uh, hey, you know that history class uh, becoming real and handy right everything now. Everything old is new again. Freaking doomed to repeat it because people aren't listening. <laughs> okay. Um. Though I'm expecting that uh, Duarte's rhetoric, rhetoric against the United States will, will calm down after Trump takes office since... Trump's essentially in love with Putin. Um, Because Putin will give him compliments. There is a bit of a bromance going on there. Um, No, uh, Putin's just going, you are, by definition, the KGB's useful idiot. All I have um, to do is offer you some praise and you will do what I want you to. Oh, good heavens, this is easy. We still have Bella out in the chat room, and, and she was mentioning, uh, wouldn't a constant stream of junk, which would be encrypted data, uh, be a red flag to government? Yeah. It would. But the thing is, if all of your traffic, all the time, is encrypted, then all of it's junk. And if more people do it, then it's an awful lot of junk. So this is why... I say, encrypt all the things, all of them, all the time. Encrypt your encrypt, encrypt the recipes that you get, all of it. In fact, just recently, I moved uh, O'ReillyRadio.com over to HTTPS. So um, we're now also on a secured platform, so any interactions that you have with the site are point-to-point. Um, there may be some point in between as you traverse different border gateways and things like that that, uh, that may be insecure, but at least the traffic to this site is guaranteed to be from us and not someone else. So, you've got that. No one is hacking into our stuff, at least not to my knowledge. So, (laughs) and that's usually how it goes. So, no, if more people encrypt more things, then it's all going to be obfuscated, and it's all junk. And at that point, if you're encrypting all your stuff, and they're going to look at you. And all you're doing is just encrypting your regular web browser traffic to, you know, check your mail and browse Facebook and things like that, which you are perfectly capable of doing. Then they would look the fool trying to find you. And really, all they're going to do is spend yet more time and more resources on looking at your phone and finding out that all of you're doing is watching cat videos. Congratulations. I'm going to encrypt every single cat video I watch. You, know? you have just wasted so much money. Yeah. And then you can just smile and laugh. It's like, <laughs> how much you paid an hour? <laughs> ah, my tax dollars at work. So good. So lovely. So, 
Yeah. But something actually makes sense in this. I'll be going back to what uh, Duarte is doing in the Philippines. Okay, ba- back to the Philippines if we have to. Yes. The for, for those people who don't know, you know, they hear International Criminal Court and they go, "Okay, well, what is that? Are they just prosecuting random things or just criminals who have to cross borders?" No. What the International Criminal Court was established to do, it investigates, prosecutes, and tries individuals accused of committing the most serious of crimes con- of concern in the national community, such as, you know, name a few, genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, etc. Yep. Which he has kind of... Um, committed. Yeah. He he has committed a crime against humanity by and indiscriminate has, murder. Russia has also technically committed war crimes with some of the bombing campaigns they did in Syria, uh, and uh, their annexation of the Crimea. Yeah. When did when did they remove <clears throat> themselves from the international court? Not too long ago. Mm. And China has always been on the hook for all sorts of human rights violations. So I think they've been all well, their China. Yeah. Um, Putin just signed his order to withdraw his country's signature on Wednesday. Yeah. So I mean, they, it, that they just pulled out, and so it they, was it was mostly over their activity in Syria. Um, uh, and Duarte is mainly over the fact that he's receiving criticism on his war on drugs and the twenty four hundred people killed during such. And the numbers just keep climbing. Yeah, I mean, with with the United States, the war on drugs is more of like an esoteric threat. You know, it, it, it's it's existential. You know, we're we're just kind of fighting the concept, and yeah, we'll we'll jail people. But he is actually going to war with drugs. You know, he's yeah. actually like, look, it's a bag of cocaine. Shoot it. You know, that kind of thing. I yeah, and so, shoot, shoot all the it, people and around it. Twenty feet yep. of it, yeah. and all the no, people around it. Around it. People yeah. who who have absolutely no connection with the drug trade are being murdered on suspicion. And no one's being tried. Well, I gotta love that population control. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm actually looking up uh, getting in detail, yes, going through Wikipedia on the Philippine drug war. Oh, boy. The actual... Parties in the conflict, yeah, one side is the Philippines government, which includes the Philippines National Police, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the Filipino Drug Enforcement Agency. The non-state participants are the Communist Party of the Philippines, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and the Moro National Liberation Front. And random vigilantes, also known as death squads. <laughs> nice. Random vigilantes. Right on. Okay, so that's um, that's that's the bad. Yeah, so, it's uh, yeah. La- latest numbers are up to forty eight hundred people killed, a little about thirty three thousand arrested, and uh, seven hundred and sixty four thousand surrendered. So yeah, war surrendered. Yeah. And that actually was in quotation marks on the article. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> okay. So that's entertaining. Just remember, like I said, this might be where World War Three starts, people. Keep paying attention to it. According um, to this yeah. story, Seeing um, some links, definitely. before Trump was elected, there were actually three African withdrawals from the ICC. So, you know, they... There are other countries that are leaving besides Russia and possibly the Philippines. Um, obviously, Russia being the biggest of the currently leaving group. But, um, you know, basically the, the, the thought is that Trump is not going to be very supportive of the ICC either. Um, and so countries are kind of positioning themselves to look in other directions. Um, yeah, with Again. with just these three three links here under the read more section, thanks to the Independent, Russia withdraws support from the International Criminal Court. The ICC has its flaws, but is there an alternative? Gambia to withdraw from the International Criminal Court. This seems like a story that we really ought to follow. <laughs> Namibia, Kenya, this... and Uganda are contemplating leaving it. Uh, Burundi 
has declared intention and has filed for formal withdrawal. Yeah. South Africa, Gambia have withdrawn. Okay, so let me make note here. Uh, more research on ICC. Uh, awesome. Okay, so, yay, future show topics. And if you have topics, email them to us at oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com or give us a phone phone call at 470-222-6759. And that's going to wrap bad ideas.